Today we are diving into a blog that almost everyone has seen but barely anyone uses. The Day Since 2000 blog, or as some like to call it, the most useless blog in Scratch. But is it really? Well, I've done a deep dive and let me tell you, this blog is way more powerful than it seems. As the name suggests, it counts the number of days since January 1st 2000 in GMT format. And if you try using it now, you'll get a number like 9000 followed by a ton of decimal paces. But what does that mean? Well, the whole number part in this case represents how many number of days has passed since the start of the new millennium. But what about those decimal points? Well, that's where it gets interesting. The decimals represent the fraction of the current day. So now that we know what the day since 2000 block does, the real question is, how do we use it? You might think, who needs a block that just counts days since 2000? But trust me, with a little creativity, you'll see this block in a whole new level. Kicking things off with the classic, the countdown timer. Whether you are counting down to New Year's Eve, a big event, or really just anything, the day since 2000 block is perfect for it. And here's how we do it. So first, we need to convert our target date into days since 2000. For example, let's say we want to count down to New Year's Eve, set so the start date to January 1st, 2000, and the end date, in this case, January 1st, 2025, and that will give you the difference in days. Once we got that number, we could subtract it from the current output of the day since 2000 block. And boom, you got your countdown. And if you want to remove this annoying decimal part, just throw it in the flow operator and voila, you got your countdown now. So now I'm using the same block to demonstrate, but you can get really creative and make awesome visual countdown using sprites and clothes. And because this block actually tracks down time to the fraction of a day, you can even count down to milliseconds, which is really cool. Multiple independent timers in a project. So we all know that Scratch has a built-in timer block, but just one. So what if you need more? And that's where the day since 2000 block comes to rescue. You can create multiple timers by storing the start time for each event separately. For example, I set up three timers using variables in this project. And for each timer, I have given them their own start time and elapsed time variable. So when a certain key is pressed, I can set the start value of a timer to the current output of the day since 2000 block. And the best part is that resetting a timer is super simple. Just subtract the stored start time for the current day since 2000 value and boom, the timer resets. This setup makes tracking down multiple events really really easy and efficient. Plus, it's much more precise than the default timer block and it actually stops when the project stops which could be useful depending on what you're building. Now let's get a bit more technical with something called Delta Time. So what the heck is Delta Time? So basically Delta Time is a method to smooth out the frame rate in your project. Let's say your game is designed to run at 30 FPS, which is the default scratch FPS, but suddenly it jumps to 60 FPS. Normally that would make everything run twice as fast, which is not what you want. But with Delta Time, we can account for how much time has passed between frames and ensure everything runs at the correct speed, no matter the frame rate. And guess what? We can actually use the day since 2000 block to calculate FPS too. So first, we need to measure the time difference between the last frame and the current frame using the day since 2000 block. And from that, we can actually calculate the Delta Time. We can multiply the regular FPS by 86,400 which is actually the number of seconds in a day and now we can multiply this value by the difference of our current frame and our last frame. So this would give us the delta type. And to calculate FPS, it's really simple. We need to just divide our current FPS by delta time and then round the whole thing and now if we run the project you can see our fps counter works so to demonstrate delta time i would use a simple move block first with 30 fps and 60. so if we use the normal thing where we actually move 10 step if we move it to 60 fps it will actually move twice as fast but if we multiply it by delta time it would actually maintain a constant speed making all your things go smooth so this way, even if the frame rate fluctuates, your game will somewhat stay smooth and consistent. And trust me, this has been used in all sorts of projects. Rift Patch uses this, you can use it on physics simulations, animations, all sorts of things. Yes, the easiest way would be using the timer block, but if you're using the timer block for something else, 
the day since 2000 is the way to go. Finally, let's talk about controlling features in your project. So we can actually make some features available in project based on a day. So think of a game where upgrades unlock on certain days or a clicker game where you get bonuses on a specific day. And we can actually do this by comparing the day since 2000 block with a preset value. For example, if I want my clicker game to give a 50 point bonus today, I just calculate the number of days since January 1st, 2000 for today's days using an online date calculator as we discussed previously. Then we can use the day since 2000 block with a flow operator to remove the decimal and compare it to the preset date using the equals operator. So what if we want to unlock features over a range of days like a week or a month? And we can actually use the greater than or less than operator to check if the current date falls within that range and make certain sections of the game available or give different kinds of bonuses, which I think is really, really cool. This makes project really more engaging and fun. I would really like to test this on future projects. And there you have it. The day since 2000 block might seem useless at first, but with a little bit of creativity, it can become a powerful tool in your Scratch project. And if you know any other ways you can use this block, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that like button button and subscribe for more awesome content. See you in the next one.